is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I... <laughs> Uh, did you, did you I, forget your name there briefly? Yeah. briefly? I'm over here. I uh, <laughs> love uh, classic Christmas movies uh, in, a, in a general sense. <laughs> I'm Dan, and it has never rung more true than today, but I despise Christmas TV movies. <laughs> I'm Alonzo, and I tried to warn you about this Christmas TV movie, and this is, is the, the Deck, Deck the, the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome yeah. to another week, another full jam-packed week of Deck the Hallmark, where at this present moment, I still don't know what movie we're covering tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what? I bet whatever movie we cover tomorrow, there's at least a decent chance you could find it on Philo. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, because you can. So here's the thing about Philo is they got the Hallmark and the Lifetime, the, the BET, the VH1, all that stuff. But you can also search... They just have random, random stuff. on-demand movies with no commercials yeah. that you can watch, it's just too. random. And I also, another thing to brag about, Philo, they won't have the movie we're covering today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's another plus. <laughs> that's, that's another, another big plus. plus. <laughs> uh, Rest assured. For them, yes, <laughs> for sure. It won't it won't clog up anybody's, you know, RAM. I don't think anyone's <laughs> asked. No one's asked Philo <laughs> for The Gathering 2 from it's, 1979. You know, it's... And, you know, it's our fault. At the end yeah. of the day, Alonzo uh, introduces us last week on his birthday to, to a, a delightful a flick. minted classic. Like, I yeah. didn't know this till afterwards, but it is the TV Christmas movie. Like, it's the kind of the standard by which all of those are based, not just for Alonzo, but in general. And we were like, man, give me more. Like, this is the stuff right here. A sequel? Sign me up. Oh boy. We did sign up and here we are. Here we are. We're talk about it. Um, but not before we talk about this. Guys, how was your weekend? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it was great, Graham. Yeah? My my kid lost his first tooth. Oh. oh. And that's awesome, but I have twins and one of them didn't. <laughs> um, so if if so you're just punching himself in the mouth now, <laughs> he was not happy. Yeah, because I I didn't tell him about the tooth fairy. That's ridiculous. But I said, if you put your tooth on your pillow, it will turn into money. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and 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 so uh, science. Sure enough, he he uh, he woke up and his pillow was money. And my his brother was not thrilled by the, the mm. just the well the his loophole plight. there is to just sleep under your pillow because your all of your teeth are then under the pillow that's right and because of it science has to be a tooth that's free okay it did you walk uh, this through with him because I, I, I think these are important through. logistics these are the logistics <laughs> well, that matter the reason I didn't do the, the reason I didn't do the tooth fairy is is not because I think Santa, I don't tell my kids if Santa if Santa's not real in my house I know that that sounds terrible the tooth but fairy, he is real everywhere no, else everybody whatever you yes, say but the reason I didn't do Tooth Fairy was it was starting to scare him. I, my, like, he had heard it from relatives and stuff. Like, somebody's coming in my bedroom. A home invader That's here right. to ruin your and, discarded body and parts. I didn't, Just show him the Tooth Fairy with Vin Diesel. I, and, yeah, and we're good to go. <laughs> he won't be scared but at I all. But I didn't mention it to him. And then I, he, we put him to sleep. And I, I leave and I hear him go, Dad, Dad. And I walk in there and he goes, you can have my tooth. <laughs> and I was like, buddy, you got to keep your tooth under your pillow and he goes no i don't want i don't want anybody to come and get yeah. and get my tooth and i said that's fine but your tooth is nobody's going to come in your tooth's <laughs> magically going to turn into money you're yeah, this is blowing <laughs> my mind and he, the amount of times you have but, just berated but, people because of santa and saying, you have Santa's the goal to be like your butt is going to magically I turn into money no stranger your was pillow I, has yeah, the power yeah. I just, but it did, for him, it magically turned into money. Gosh. It did. Oh, no stranger came in his room. He was worried about strangers coming in his room. No stranger came in his room. That's what counts. But my, my other son is not happy, and that was made for a fun weekend. But that, that was actually two weekends ago. I don't know what happened this weekend because we haven't been there yet. Well, I, I've just been living my whole life waiting to have Bran ask me how my weekend was. So I'm so, I'm so thrilled about that. I don't even have an answer for that question. He did it. You, you did. It. You did. Uh, you uh, you were able. You had your first big premiere back in the theaters. I went back to the movies. Yeah, I mean not a premiere, but it was a press screening. A screen. Um, I'm sorry. 
Uh, you know, there's a John Krasinski was not there. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. There was no red carpet. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was. I got to see a Quiet Place Part Two, and then four hours later, I had to go to another part of L.A. and see uh, Fast Nine, which was exciting. Yeah. So, but in both cases, it was like masks on, two seats between everybody. And, did you, know, you get concessions, thing. Alonzo? Well, at the Quiet Place Part Two, when I think the AMC theater where they did it wasn't open to the public yet, so it was closed. You couldn't oh, get wow. any. Oh wow. Then, then I went to the the one in Burbank, which was open, and the concession stand was open. So I had a soda and some Twizzlers, and was doing yes. this under the mask straw thing yeah. and yeah. the whole nine yards. I I'll tell you, I I had I have been eating so well for fourteen months. Like Dave has had me <laughs> like we we have like a big meat meal once a week, but beyond that, it's vegetarian. It's like we were really a lot of lot of you know. The healthy stuff. So I, what do I do? My first night out, in the world, I, go to Buff, I go to Buffalo Wild Wings, and then I have Twizzlers and a soda. And all night, my my body's just like, you need more water. I don't That's know right. what the heck you just put in me, but this is not good. You yeah. go back home where you, you belong. Yeah, the, the Buffalo Wild Wings. I don't know when that's ever a good choice. No, and I've been <laughs> numerous times. My first trip back to the theater, I had large soda, red vines. It was, it happened. There was no doubt mm. about it. Yeah, I was uh, on vacation, and there was only an. A AMC theater close and they only had a four o'clock and a seven o'clock showing. Uh, and I don't know if that's universal to the AMCs. If they're only doing the, the week, two showings. During the week, they're only doing the, 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 two the middle of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's crazy. Yeah. What a time. Yeah. We'll get what back. We'll get back to it eventually. For um, sure. All right. Well, we've, gathering part two. <laughs> we've tried our best uh, to did, avoid yeah. it as long as possible. <laughs> Ooh, I, can do was, more, I can do more loose tooth. Yeah. Stuff no, dude. Yeah, keep going. Go for it. Do you have any <laughs> tips uh, for how to... If I want some magic money, like how to get rid of the loose tooth. The tooth that's unencumbered. It's not attached to you under First your pillow. You tie a string to the doorknob. Turns and into money. That's right. Unencumbered. That's right. That's all I'm lying. <laughs> um, all right. Gathering part two. Uh, originally aired on December uh, 17th, 1979. 1979. People from around the country that loved Gathering One sat their families down in front of the screen the week before Christmas and said, this will get us in the spirit. And it went a little something like this. It is two Christmases after the last one, um, and uh, Adam has passed away. The family is all at this uh, uh, at the company. Uh, they're doing. They're honoring Adam's legacy. They got this pretty, and I will say, a pretty dope painting. Yeah. I don't know yeah, if yeah. you guys saw. It, it was a pretty great. dope painting. Yeah. Um, and uh, after this guy walks in, and it really upsets the family. They're like, hey, "What's he doing here?" Uh, turns out, Kate is now dating this fella. His name is Victor Wainwright, and if that's not enough reason to hate him, it turns out that he, after Adam passed away. Uh, approached Kate and tried to get her to sell the company and now the whole family is like oh he's just dating you to try to convince you to sell the company everyone thinks he's a big sketch ball so what they decide to do is we're going to all get back together for Christmas time we're going to keep an eye on mom we're going to see what's really going on here with old Wainwright and we'll get to the bottom of this now one of uh, there's also some other drama going on um we do see a handful of flashbacks that show, like, the funeral, that show uh, Kate meeting Wainwright, all this stuff. Um, and then we do get a few different storylines within the family of one of Kate's daughters is considering an abortion, ultimately decides uh, to, to keep the baby. Um, Bud and one of the other brothers, I only know Bud's name, I don't know who you want, uh, they're mad at each other, um, but it just takes one nice uh, afternoon on the dock with some water, a sponge fight, um, and they're all back together. They uh, have a big family fireworks show once again. Um, I would say a little bit of, of underwhelming compared to the last one, but you know, what can you do? You can only do so many fireworks shows. Um, and then the movie wraps up with Wainwright showing up for New Year's Eve, and the family seems to have finally come around to him. They wish each other a happy New Year, and they drink to it. And that, my friends, was The Gathering Part 2. We did it. We did And I it. will say this. As we were wrapping up there, I thought for sure you had missed a lot of details, but... Not I, by my recollection. I, <laughs> I don't miss much. I don't think you, you did miss much. 
Yeah, I don't think I did. Uh, the, the the sour puss kid who tries to convince his oh, yeah. sister that there's no Santa. <laughs> yeah. Who would do but, such a thing? Uh, monster. That's right. Let me introduce you to magic money. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and magic we'll talk about... teeth. The ma- money is yeah, not sorry. magic. <laughs> yeah. The teeth are magic, Get brand. Right. Come on. <laughs> Man, I love watching TV so much, but I just have kind of had it with the old way of doing things, Dan. You mean the new way of doing things, which is all of these different services. I'm sick of the old way. I'm sick of the new way. I'm sick of every way. What if there's a third way? What do you mean? Where you could pay less and get more and get an unlimited DVR. I would say, well, quit lying. Well, you could get your realities, like your 90 Day I Fiance, love that one. your love and hip-hop. You love it. You could get it. your Christmas movies on the Hallmark, the Lifetime. Please, please. Up. You could get your prestige drama on the AMC. Okay. You could have an unlimited DVR, and you could do it for like, well, under 30 bucks a month. I don't think so. You can with Philo. Tell me more. Philo TV is the place to find all your faves in one spot for the least amount of money possible. And with an unlimited DVR. It's a win, win, win. It's a third way of doing things. I'll do it, but sweeten the pot, please. 25% off for two months. And I forgot about kids programming. (gasps) Philo is literally for everyone. Wow, I love it. From kids from 1 to 92. For kids from whatever. You got it. If you're a person, Philo is for you. You can go to philo.tv slash DTH. You're going to get 25% off your next two months. Philo.tv slash DTH. You won't regret it. Okay. Well, we're back. Uh, We're We're talking Gathering 2, 1979. (laughs) I don't know if this one aired on ABC or not. I could not find that information, but I imagine. I believe believe it did, yes. Okay. Um, ABC double down. They, they, they double down on the, the gathering. Um, well, let's break it down. Um, I imagine you, by the, our tones and uh, general whimsy, you can tell our hot takes, but let's put it in word form. I'm going to start with my good friend Alonzo. Alonzo, what did you think of Gathering 2? You had seen it before. You did warn us. So yeah. how did it compare to... Your, your recollection of the movie. I, I didn't watch it in its original airing, and maybe I think because I'd already read, I'd read the reviews that it was just not nearly as good as the first one, but uh, I did watch it when I was doing the Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas because the first uh, Warner Archive DVD they put out of The Gathering was a two-disc set, and they threw in Gathering Part 2 for no extra. Like, all right, fine, I'll watch it. And yeah, it's uh, I was disappointed with it then. I'm disappointed with it now. Um, most of the cast is back uh, except for uh, Gregory Harrison uh, of the of the characters that lived um but you know you don't have the same screenwriter you don't have Randall Kleiser directing and it just it feels very kind of hacky and the first one feels like a movie and this feels like a tv movie and um you know, I think they, they really, a, a lot of the the sort of character issues are contrived. They desperately try to remind you of what you liked in the first one. They do the the not by Kipling poem again. They do oh. the fireworks again. Uh, and, it, you know, they even have like these weird flashbacks where Ed Azar's character is sort of off screen and you don't see him, but they're oh. talking to him. It's just like, uh, I just, I don't, I didn't, I never cared about the new problems in this movie except for the ones that directly refer reference the first movie so uh, beyond that yeah this just felt kind of desperate than uh, a cash grab bring it home bran this movie to me felt less like a made for tv movie and more like uh, paint drying uh, <laughs> or something like that and i will just say it is a bold decision this isn't necessarily a decision that i would make if i was in the writer's room but when we're thinking about making a sequel to a beloved Christmas movie when you're thinking about storylines for the sequel like a like the abortion storyline would have been down on the list yeah, for yeah. me personally. It for, was 1979. This yeah. was hot stuff. For, 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 <laughs> yeah, but for you, know, it's, it's Christmas, man. I don't know. It <laughs> caught me very off guard. I didn't see it coming. I will say that. So kudos for the surprise, not kudos for the movie, unfortunately. Uh, big bummer for Brand seeing as how much I really adored last week's movie. But uh, what can you do, Dan? Not since... Super Babies colon Baby Geniuses <laughs> 2 <laughs> has a sequel summited uh. such peaks of awfulness uh, as we see in The Gathering Part 2. 
And in the in the first movie, Ed Asner bears his soul as a dying dad who wants to make right. And in the second movie, people dial rotary telephones for 15 straight seconds. <laughs> um, the, to say this is a drop in quality uh, is an understatement of epic proportions. This thing is bad, but bad, 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 bad. There are seven minutes of music playing while cars are driving in this movie. It is like At minimum what Zack Snyder is to slow motion. The <laughs> gathering part two is to music and cars driving. Uh, this movie sucks big time. It is terrible. Give me some Hallmark. Where 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 my where my uh, Alicia Whip movies at? Uh, where, where's that pickler when you need her? Um, woof! This is bad, guys. It's a bad movie. I don't know what you want from me. I was I. It was everything I had to just keep my eyes on the screen. It was very very bad. I I do think it's the first time that I will certify a movie as a dumpster fire. Like. Done. Wow. Okay. Fire. But the thing is, for Brian, there's a the, it, this movie has better performances than some Hallmark movies. But it it is as boring as boring gets. Like there's just mm. not a lot. You to, brought up I, then. You brought up Christmas in Montana as we were watching this. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, right, right there, right there. Wow. Yeah. I, th this movie, th the first ten or fifteen minutes, I was sitting there thinking, "What is this movie even about?" <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's not a Christmas movie. It, it is barely. It's just. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. It is an absolute mess out there. Whew. Like, Boy. and it's not even like a bad premise necessarily. Like, oh, the dad died, mom's moving on. Like, that's a fine. That's a fine starting jumping off point. But like, it just does not. It just, meanders. It it just meanders. Yeah, it doesn't just, have mm. stuff for all these people to do, and it's longer than the first one. Like, how dare <laughs> you? Are you kidding me? <laughs> they Sheesh. really needed the time. They needed to, the time. Know, yeah. Tell the steep story. Uh, <laughs> let's get to the feels. Okay. Uh, did we have any feels? Did we find any, Alonzo? I had a couple. I the, uh, Veronica Hamill, who plays the wife of the son whose name we can never remember, Tom, <laughs> Tom's wife, uh, Helen, uh, they are Christmas shopping when he informs her that they he's about to upheave all of their holiday plans because they need to go home because of, you know, mom's new boyfriend. And the way that she's like, all right, well, yes, I will make this trip for you. And we're also going to cancel all these dinners. And uh, you are buying me a new set of luggage right now. <laughs> and I thought that was a really funny scene. I thought she played it really well. Um, and then before it gets to completely undone by the stupid sponge fight, I thought that Tom's speech to bud about the father's decision and why he didn't say anything and how in retrospect obviously doesn't matter what he thought that he obviously really harmed bud because bud and his family went back to canada thinking dad was gonna live forever you know uh i thought that was a good speech as well i like to think that the sponge fight is like the the catalyst of uh, like snowball fights in Hallmark movies. Like Hallmark <laughs> watched that and was like, what if we did that, but with snowballs? And what we if put they in every flower movie. at each other? Yeah, <laughs> I like that. That's good. For me, man, like I, I, I was disappointed because I got so many like true Christmas feels in the first one. Mm. And in this one, I went, you know, 20 minutes at a time forgetting that it was a Christmas movie at all. Like it, it, yeah. it lacked so much. Uh, Christmas spirit and joy that it just kind of bummed me out. So I got bummed out feels. Yeah, I mean, I think the brothers uh, recon uh, reconnecting towards the end was the closest thing I got. Um, and again, because that's just because that's a holdover from the first movie. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. we're invested in that stuff and not in any of the new stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it for me, Dan. Um, I I would agree with Alonzo on, on the, the, the speech the brother gives to the other brother. Um, the speech that the other the brother gives to Bud, <laughs> um, you know the 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 cleaning of the boat, the what, what's going on, the water fight, what's going on. But when he like, there's no right answer. Like when your dad is terminal and he doesn't want to let you know, there's no right answer in that situation. Like either you tell everyone and you make the dad upset because now he's treated like an invalid when he wants just to be remembered as the guy, you know, a better version of who he was, or you don't say anything and then the siblings get mad at you. And the speech unpacks that really well. Like it unpacks the idea of, I'm sorry that you feel like I betrayed you. However, don't think it was any easier on me. And so 
though that was the only authentic moment I feel like in this movie. The rest of it is very hacky, as you said. That one moment did ring true for me, and I did actually like I could keep my eyes on the screen, and I was like, yeah, this this makes sense. So yeah, I, I was in for that. That that moment I feel like could have happened in a longer version of the first movie, though, where we get to see all the way through the death and funeral of the thing. True, so, yeah. Like, don't make a sequel. Just make the other one 20 yes. minutes longer. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I, I will say, I did get a car phone feel. I forgot. Like, there was a moment where car phones meant you were, like, a real... Oh, yeah. You were a real high roller, big city deal maker. You were so. doing it. He was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. Uh, let's say, and, and, I mean, obviously, that guy wants to buy the company. Like, if you have a phone, a phone like, you want your, to your buy the company. Wayne Wright. Sure. You're, you up to no good. You're up to yeah. no good. It's, it's no doubt about law. it. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back with the wait, what's in the what, the ABCs <laughs> here on Dyke Talbert. Boy, oh boy, we're oh, back. Yeah. We're talking about uh, the ga- is it is it just gathering or is it the gathering? The, the gathering, gathering the comma, two. part two, part two, um, and we're gonna get to the white what's. I'm gonna start with Alonzo. Alonzo, what you got? Well, you know, again, this movie not nearly Christmassy enough, and finding weird ways to fill its running time. But you'd think a thing they could have actually dwelled on a little is when Wainwright comes to Christmas dinner, and it's awkward, and nobody knows what to do, and everybody's like polite but rude. You know, <laughs> what they do is he shows up, he goes through the gauntlet of kids who are all sort of like in, in, in various levels of indifferent toward him, and then you cut to. Uh, to to Kate walking him back to his car and kind of apologizing for it. And I'm like, wait, did he turn around and leave or did we just skip Christmas? And it turns out we just skipped Christmas. We skipped Christmas. It's not important. It's a, yeah. it's a minor detail for sure. So that seemed like an odd filmmaking choice. Uh, I could have lived without Kate telling her pregnant daughter who is considering an abortion that she has no right not to tell the father. I'm going to chalk that up to 1979 yeah. old lady and just like go with Seems that. Seems like a conversation mm. we're not going to get into, but yeah, it did, it did ring weird here in 2021. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't, didn't age particularly well. Uh, so yeah, that was, those were my main ones. Um, yeah, I don't have a ton, uh, uh, either. Uh, one is just, uh, the, the, the kiss between Ooh, Wainwright boy. and Kate, mm. It's up there as one of the most uncomfortable kisses I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know if that guy's just never kissed anyone before. It did strike me as his first kiss ever on screen. I don't know. It was a weird bit. It was very uncomfortable. I know part of it was yeah. she was uncomfortable, I was, so it, it played yeah. well. But I, I, I felt like he was really trying to give it his all, and it, it just was a weird. It was. I was very uncomfortable yeah. there. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. know. What to I do. was too. No, I looked. I, we were both kind of like trying to shed <laughs> like we were just like hey, yeah, yeah. oh um, make it stop yeah yeah i i wrote down the amount of driving in this movie's absurd <laughs> like is, just if you do lot. decide to watch this movie please have a stopwatch ready and just yeah. every time someone's driving uh, yeah. and just report back and not, we 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 estimated seven yeah. minutes and i think that might be under us yeah. but i'm just i'm being honest with you i'm not talking about driving with a purpose like a car chase scene or like a conversation just a camera shot of cars of car. driving and music playing with no just it just ambling like a golden retriever out for a long stroll like that is what's happening in this movie yeah yeah and my last one is it d- it did feel to me in this movie that they forgot that their dad was a jerk there it is thank right? you <laughs> thank you they, uh, this entire movie throws that out and i understand like that you know you you pro- probably remember more fondly but, in that situation for sure but there is not one mention of the facts that i mean they meant kate mentions it once that she lost her husband twice once when he left and once when he died well but, tom talks about how they were uh, stubbornly at loggerheads and they talk, talk about his relationship with bud but that's about it they talk about this guy like he was adam thornton patron saint of abusive fathers like right, like, <laughs> like like but bud bud is completely a different person in this movie like in the first one, he's up there working on roofs, and is and it's I don't know. It was a weird like. 
the thing that bothers me about that is that the, the, the worst thing I can say about this movie is, is it makes the first one worse. Because what's great about the first one is, is that this is a guy, Adam Thornton is a character that Ed Asner plays so perfectly, who's not trying to win a Best Father award. Right. He, award he's just trying to get back to good right. before he dies. He's not trying to bring everybody home so they can remember how awesome he was. He's trying to bring everybody back so he can apologize and so the last memory of him can be a good one instead of a terrible one. And then in this movie, they talk about this guy like he he was the father of the year every year. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, it, that's not, not the case. Like, there should be a little bit more admiration for a, a father that did wrong swallowing his pride than a revelry in who this guy was his whole life because that was not who he was his whole life. And and that was a huge weight what to me. Like, it didn't mm. make any sense. It makes the first movie, it takes some of that sheen off the first movie to me. Yeah. Um, are you got more? Nope, that's it. I got more. Uh, but a lot, there's a lot of this movie that very closely resembles a horror movie in how it shot and and scored. Um, Maureen Stapleton, and maybe I just didn't remember it from 19, the 1977 one, but the way that she t t like says her lines, she talks like it's a kind of like a haunted house movie, and then the music comes in, and I think it's supposed to be make you feel sad, but it it it's just eerie, like for no reason. It's eerie to me, like it felt that way anyway. Um, the two brothers scene that was so great. Boy, Bud is washing the heck out of that boat. Uh, I, I got to be honest. He has scrubbed that window clean no less than eight times. Like, it's just the same spot. He's just getting over and over. Like, move around, buddy. Like, you can act a little bit. It's okay. Like, he has scrubbed that one side clean as a whistle. Um, the fireworks display, this is what was interesting to me. Um it didn't seem as impressive, but the setup on the ground was more elaborate. <laughs> um, so there's more stations, it's bigger, and it took them 15 seconds to set up, but yet we got less out of it somehow. Like it was much more it's of a metaphor just, for the whole movie. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was much more of just like the flames that just kind of sizzle. Yeah. And less like, but like those we, boys. in the first one, it's like, how did they set up four Roman candle stations? And this one, there's like 10 stations. <laughs> and but they're all just kind of like, ah. they've been out there like 10 yeah. jazz hands. Ah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then lastly, we saved this for the end. And I'm hoping Alonzo didn't catch it so we can quiz him. Um, <laughs> this movie is historic. Uh, and it does hold a place that hopefully will make our second edition uh, of I'll Be Home for Christmas <laughs> movies coming out September 28th. They end this film uh, by saying Happy New Year's to each other quite a few times. Oh, no, I didn't notice. Alonzo, <laughs> how many times does this family say Happy New Year's in a row? Is it more or less than in Reunited at Christmas? It's more. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, then I'll say 14? 13 times. Wow. They say Happy New Year's to each other 13 times <laughs> before the credits roll. And it, and, and it does make you wonder what re, if Reunited at Christmas yeah. was like. Whoever's directing the Paying movie homage is to, like, this uh, is what we'll do. Two. It's the gathering part two. <laughs> Like, <laughs> everybody watches it and makes fun of it, and they're like, you don't know you your don't history. <laughs> if you had watched The Gathering Part 2, you'd know what I was going well, for. sir or madam. <laughs> Touche. I you, sense a film and a movie happening yeah, here. Yeah, a tip of the cap to you. That's right. If you make me watch those two movies again, oh, no, friendship no, no, no. over. That's it. <laughs> That is, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's worth noting the first gathering nominated for five Emmys and won one for like outstanding special and the gathering part two is nominated yeah, for goose egg. Goose egg, <laughs> nothing. 13 happy new years wow. in the movie. You just, you just can't make that up. <laughs> When it started happening, uh, we both sat up a lot. I was bit. not We're even like, watching the movie anymore. Like I was on my computer and I looked up a lot at Brand. I looked up at Brand and I went seven, eight, <laughs> nine, and I I, ca I counted I counted ten and I said we got to run it back, man. I think it could break the record, and we ran it back and there was thirteen. Oh man, amazing! It was a beautiful. <laughs> this moment. is this is why y'all do what you. This do. is why we do what we do. <laughs> That's a beautiful right. moment. Yeah, uh, it's time for what the ABC is part of the show. We wonder what could have been maybe happening. That if there was, I a wonder gathering, a lot of uh, what could have been. <laughs> if there was a gathering three, uh, oh. maybe some answers we'd get. Oh. Uh, Alonzo, are you wondering anything? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, my main thing is these people all need therapy. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the 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 kids need therapy to like butt out of their mother's life. The mother needs therapy to tell the kids to butt out of her life. Um, so yeah, they they all feel like they 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 really need to work on themselves a little bit here. Uh, my, the other big question that I had really was: Is Thornton Industries ripe for takeover or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, Tom and Bruce Davison have this whole conversation about. Oh, I guess we're we're vulnerable to to takeover. I'm like maybe y'all should do something about that, yep. you know, but it's, it just kind of gets dropped. And it's like, I, I really want to know how Thornton industries comes out of all yeah. this. And, but bud works there, right? What is bud? No, do? bud no he's got there. the woodworking. He's, he's a woodworking. woodworking. Yeah. Uh, what, but he was the son-in-law yes. is the guy that started there at the end of the gathering. So what's, hours. so what's, I guess my question <laughs> just is, yes, I do, is just bud. Like it's Christmas day. Let me give him. <laughs> How about today, tomorrow, and the next day? And I think we'll be good. <laughs> well, we're closed all week. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. You'll get it. I'll leave a note on the door. <laughs> um, my Mine is just Bud then. Like, Bud agreed to, he, he came home, he left Canada, came back, and it just seems like his woodworking business is just exploding, and he doesn't want it at all. Like, <laughs> so what's going to happen? Like, Bud is still seems like he is in quite the, uh, I don't know, he's going through quite the uh, internal turmoil, like not knowing what to do with this thriving woodworking company that apparently he didn't want in the first place. Maybe so take on an apprentice? For yeah, that? maybe. I don't know. I like it. Yeah, yeah. that's what I want to know. I want to know how it's Bud. <laughs> I was confused. The so the daughter who's pregnant, the the father Peggy. of the baby, Peggy. Yeah, the the the, da the father of the baby. They have this conversation, and the the writing that makes sense there to me is like, let's get back together, let's get married, and we'll raise this child, you know, uh, together. And and they allude to the fact that he proposes again. But the thing that I'm hung up on is his suggestion to her to Peggy is. You carry the baby to term, have the baby, and then I will take the baby and raise it on my own. That 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 was what was in the script. And I like I understand she's worried about being a professional and her job, but like what what were what was the point of the, the father piping up with the suggestion of you carry the baby for nine months and then I'll just take the baby? Like I think the idea being, as opposed to you having to give up your career to raise it or you giving it up for adoption, I will take over the 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 the, the nitty gritty of you know actually raising this kid, and it will still be like our child. We're keeping it between us. I guess I don't know. All I know is he got off that train wearing a newsies cap and a Doctor Who scarf, and I'm like, you do not want to raise a no. child with no, that. No, guy. no, 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 no. It could be dangerous. He, but he mm -hmm. also threw in this line. Where he was like, and I'll and I'll and I'll get help, which yeah, was I, like, are you are you trying to say like, uh, like professionals have like children, nanny, like a nanny, or am I gonna find another woman? Like, like, what was he trying to get? Because she was very like people that work all the time have children. I know it's the '70s were a different time, but like, wouldn't it make more sense to say, I will help? Like, you can keep your job. I will help you raise this kid, but you can still get to see your child. Like, I I, I just. I, I, I think that's implicit. I think basically it's like, look, we're not going to get married clearly because you've, we've, we've, we've decided not to go down that path. But if you entrust the raising of the kid to me, you don't have to just either deal with it yourself or like, you know, send it off into the system and hope for the best, I guess, is, the, Oof, is what they're going for man. there. Man, this movie's just complex. There's layers. Mm. <laughs> so very. And somewhere in all those layers is Christmas, I think. No, there's no Christmas in sight. <laughs> but Happy New, New Year's, Year's 13 is there, times. Boy. Yeah. Happy New Year's, everybody. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back next week with another one of these, and we'll be back tomorrow with another one of those. And <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, Alonzo, give us some parting wisdom, if you don't mind, something that you've been uh, stewing on. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you, I just started watching uh, Pride on uh, FX, and you can also watch it on Hulu. It's a six-part series uh, starting in the 1950s about sort of the history of LGBT rights in the U.S. And I got to say, I tuned into the 50s show thinking, oh, th this is going to be stuff I know. And it was a lot of stuff I didn't know. Huh. Uh, so, you know, it's a, if you are interested in how we got to where we are now and, uh, you know, what it was like for gay people and trans people even before, like, Stonewall in the late 60s, this is a 
really informative show. It's produced by Christine Vachon, who's like a legendary indie producer, and a lot of really great uh, LGBT filmmakers are doing these episodes. So, yeah, check it out. Fantastic. Great. Um, Dan? What do you mean? You want to do it again tomorrow? I, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I said your name, and he said, "What do you mean?" <laughs> like, like, I, I thought you were asking. What do you mean? Me, I thought you were asking me to do words of wisdom as well. I'm no. Like, no, 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 no. I already gave you my money magic tip. You know, no, I'll just back up. No, I was just gonna say, Dan, it's done. I'm I exhausted. said your name, and you got defensive. Yeah. And no, I'm done. I have Soul clocked takes. out. No. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast recorded live and yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina is produced by Brandon Gray, set decor by Plum Haywood Mall. For more information on all Bramble Jam podcasts, you can go to BrambleJamPodcast.com for more information on how to listen to Deck the Hallmark ad-free. You can go to BrambleJamPlus.com.